Hi, Librarian Tara back again to talk to you about doing background research. This is um, something you do at the very beginning process of your um, research projects. And this is where you're going to get a survey, a broad survey of your topic. Um, and this is just getting uh, kind of a, a lay of the land. You're figuring out kind of what the uh, main issues are related to your topic, if there are different areas or aspects of it that are important, um, what kind of um, issues there are, what are the, um, the, the main areas of interest, um, what are some of the, the, uh, the issues that are of current issue of interest, um, what are some of the historical issues? How has this developed over time? Um, what are uh, some of the important developments? Um, uh, you know, maybe there are some important people or events related to your topic. Uh, you just kind of want to get an idea of what's going on. And this is also a good opportunity for you to um, figure out if, you know, if your topic is going to be a little bit um, maybe too much for you to talk about in your research project, given the parameters of your research project. So for example, if you're supposed to give a 10 minute PowerPoint presentation, maybe you can't cover all of this topic. Um, so you might want to focus in on just a particular part of it. And by doing the background research, you can kind of figure out, well, what part of this am I interested in? Or what question um, can I kind of focus on that will be of interest to me? So um, one thing that I like to do to do that is to start with an encyclopedia article about my broad research area. And um, one thing I like to use a lot uh, for this is, is Wikipedia. And I know you've heard your instructors say, oh, you can't use Wikipedia for your research project. And what they mean by that is, is you're not going to use it as one of your sources of information that you're going to cite in your research paper. You know, you're not going to say, you're not going to get up there and say, you know, according to Wikipedia, the three most important aspects of blah, blah, blah. You're not going to be doing that. Um, but what Wikipedia is good for is for you to, um, is to kind of get started, to get that, uh, to, to get those ideas about where to go with your paper, to get the, and, and really what it's good for is, uh, also to get those words that you're going to need in order to get to the sources of information you need, to get to the articles, to get to the, uh, experts, to get to the, to the websites and you know to get the right terminology um, so sometimes when I start looking for information I don't even know what words to use to get to what I need right I don't even really know how to describe the thing that I'm looking for so that's another thing I'm looking for when I'm looking at those those uh, encyclopedia or Wikipedia articles is, is what the heck words am I going to use to get what I need so um, let me just give you an example of that. This is on the uh, technology lib guide that we have for the subject guide. And uh, it's under the getting started tab here. Um, and uh, so yeah, where do professional librarians start with the research with the background? So yeah, main issues, components, developments, and terminology related to, and we're not reading the articles, we're just scanning them. We're just looking for those keywords, the concepts, the structures, the important events. Um, so now we do have our Credo reference collection. Um, this is an online library of encyclopedias. Uh, so that's a good resource, but I'd be honest with you, I usually just start with Wikipedia. Now Credo reference is going to be helpful if um, uh, they have a lot of specialized encyclopedias in there. So um, if I start delving into maybe, you know, some technical encyclopedias, that might be a good place to go. Um, but just for getting the lay of the land, I find Wikipedia is perfectly good. I'll just pop something up in here. So um, this is good for all sorts of things. So I'm just going to try, I'm going to 
look at my cheat sheet here. Um, let's just look at um, I'm going to put in cybercrime. So um, what I'm looking here right off is uh, for different kinds of um, words like hacking, okay, privacy, espionage, cyber warfare, words that might be related to my topic. So um, what if hacking is my topic? So I'm going to click on hacking and see what comes up. Okay. Um, security hacker. Uh, white hats, black hats. What does that mean? Let me look at that. Um, also over on, on the right here, since this article is a series on computer hacking, there's some also some other links here. Black hat conferences. Um, Crimeware, computer crime, hacking tools. What is it? What is a vulnerability? What is an exploit in the context of hacking? Right? Malware. Right? So if you're interested in malware, you might want to click on those and find out what that means. Um, over on the left, these can often be helpful. Just look at the contents of the Wikipedia article. You don't have to read the whole thing. Just looking at the contents, you can see that, oh, there's different kinds or classifications or kinds of hacking. White hat, black hat, gray hat. What the heck are these? I don't even know. Um, so I'm going to click on black hat. And so this says, it's a hacker who violates computer security for little reason beyond maliciousness or personal gain. Okay, so these are the bad guys, right? Um, so uh, there's a main article here, so maybe I'll click on that. And so I'm I'm looking for um, just I'm looking for kind of the lay of the land here, right? Security hacker. Now here's a uh, an article that goes into history of security hacking, um, classifications again, attacks. Um, so I, I, I'm just sort of picking up some of the words here. Now I'm going to write down some of these words because they're going to be the words that I'm going to find in articles about this. I'm going to find in newspaper articles, magazine articles, journal articles. I'm going to find in, um, in books, right? So if those are the words that are used in those sources, then those are the words I'm going to need to use to find those sources of information that I'm going to use for my research papers, right? So those are what those are the words that are key for finding those sources. That's why they're called keywords. Those are the ones I'm going to plug into my databases. So that's what I'm looking for. Now in Wikipedia, I can uh, scroll down to the bottom of the page and I can see, see also, so there's other places to look, right? References, those are the places where the, um, those are the sources of information cited by this Wikipedia article. Some of these may be good sources for you to go to, some may not be so good, um, but there's other places that you can look for it. So what we're looking for here are not, in, not just the words to use that we're going to use in the databases, but leads. We're looking for leads, right? So we're just getting started and we're looking for leads to sources of information. Uh, further down, here's some external links. So for any kind of information, there may be uh, organizations or government agencies um, uh, that are concerned with this, this issue or this, uh, um, this topic. And often they're good sources of information, so you want to seek them out. Now, these organizations often have a reason for existing in the world, and they often have an agenda. So they have a particular viewpoint of the world, and they're going to have information that backs up that viewpoint. So they have a bias. There's nothing wrong with bias. All humans have bias. But it's important that you find out, you try to figure out what that bias is, so you can realize that, well, that's their point of view, and to realize that they may not have a complete point of view, right? So they're not, they may not have the complete picture. So you can look at other points of view. 
Um, so one thing you can do to find out what, what is their point of view is uh, look at their mission statement. Find the mission statement. It's probably on their website somewhere. Um, that can give you a good into, insight to how do they feel about this issue? What are they trying to do in the world? What, what uh, change are they trying to make, right? What's their philosophy? Um, so that's a quick and easy way to find out is just look for their mission statement. Now, um, Wikipedia, in some cases, like this is a beautiful article that shows you, um, sorry if I'm making you all seasick here. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. I should just jump around to the top. Um, for some, uh, some topics, it's, it's got lots of, you know, it's very compartmentalized and has lots of uh, organization like this. In some cases, um, the Wikipedia articles or even the topics are, are, kind of a little bit more philosophical, right? So, uh, for example, um, let's try to look at maybe a, a different topic. Let's try to look at like, um, how about, okay, so like the, um, uh, the University of Hawaii um, and the, the, the UH community colleges uh, have this, um, goal that they want all of the textbooks to be what they call open source or open access textbooks by the year 2020, I think, uh, which is just a few years away. Um, so they want all these textbooks to be um, um, essentially free or very, very low cost. And so, um, you know, so maybe you want to find out, well, what does that mean? So are these like online digital textbooks and things like that? So maybe we want to look for open source text book, right? And uh, the open textbook. Okay, so maybe we can find out a little bit what that is about, right? Um, so there's a lot of overlap between open textbooks and technology, as you might imagine, um, because the printing costs are taken out of the equation with your digital copies. So that might be um, something to look into, right? Um, let's see what else we can look at. We can look at things like uh, for business, you might look into um, uh, something like Human resource management systems. Okay, so if you're looking at different ways um, to use technology to help with um, with business operations, so there's there's different systems um, management systems that are used now. So you can look into uh, things like that. Um, so like this one, this article, you'll see a, a lot of um, different ways that these things can be used, but it looks like a different kind of article, doesn't it? Um, it has some other kinds of things, uh, other kinds of um, links and whatnot. A little bit less, uh, you know, you know, kinds of facts and things like this, and a little bit more conceptual. Even more conceptual. Let's take a look at um, whoops, technological unemployment. Okay, so talking about technology in the workplace. Um, so this is really more of a philosophical kind of article. And so this is the idea that technology is um, changing the workplace and it's making some types of jobs obsolete. And this is something that's been happening, you know, for a long time. Um, so, uh, but, but it's, it's something that is uh, continuing apace. Um, 
you, you know, started back in the industrial revolution and, and, and so forth. Uh, so people used to, uh, you know, harvest ice from lakes in the winter and store it and then deliver it to people's homes in the summer. Those jobs are gone, right? So, um, but now that, uh, you know, we've got all sorts of like, in, you know, um, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence and things like this that are replacing kinds of jobs. And so, um, so that might be an interesting, more philosophical thing to take a look at. But here we might be looking at um, types of technology, we might be looking at um, names of people or events or uh, whole eras like the or, or events called like the Industrial Revolution. Uh, we might look at um, things like artificial intelligence. Uh, so, you know, the, the whole, the, the, the technology is, is so broad and so far reaching that you really gonna need to take a look for some small aspect that you can focus on um, to look at more in depth, right? So find something of interest to you um, that, that you can kind of look at more closely, right? And try to cover too much in your research topic or in your in your research project. So finding these background uh, articles, these encyclopedia articles can help you not only to focus your topic by finding, okay, oh, maybe I'll just focus just on maybe this one industry um, and uh, um, or this one tool that can help um, a small business owner. Uh, maybe someone, you know, so how can this help somebody with a particular kind of um, industry, right? Or uh, what kinds of technology can help a, um, you know, can help elementary school children learn to read, right? So whatever your topic is, um, you may need to get kind of specific about what you're looking for, and that's okay. Doesn't mean all the other stuff isn't important. It just means that you have so much time and you need to, um, you know, just keep in mind, in mind how much time you have or how much space you have to deal with. And that, in, you know, to give your topic uh, the attention it deserves, you may need to be really focused about what that is.